Going live in three, two, one. Hello, everybody. What is going on? Welcome to Grounded, my Q&A live stream podcast. And we are here with Kaz from CyberLift, uh, another YouTube channel. And we are going to talk to him in just a second. And you are going to get to ask us both questions and talk about full self-driving beta um, or whatever you really want to ask us questions about. I want to start with a little kind of preemptive thing here. This is my first time doing a live stream in this way. It's actually my second time, but my first time like where I think it's going to work <laughs> um, doing this kind of interview live stream. So I'm I'm on Zoom with Kaz right now. Am I saying that correctly? Kaz? Uh, cause, like cause. cause and effect. Thank you. That's, <laughs> that's nah, why no I worries. asked. Um, so with Kaz, I am, I'm on Zoom with him. We are both uh, using Starlink. So hopefully that will yep. work well. Uh, but today is May 23rd, 2023. In case you're listening to this in the future, this will be podcastable. You can go on your favorite podcast um, and listen to this whenever you want, 10 times or finish it up later or whatever you want to do. Uh, so everything is uh, being recorded. Keep that in mind. <laughs> um, so yeah. today uh, we're going to talk to you about uh, you do Lyft mostly with uh, full self-driving beta. And yep. uh, I, I want to hear a lot about that experience. And as well, I heard uh, you made a bet, something about uh, shaving your beard. What What is that about? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. The beard pact. Uh, this is something that happened a while back, beginning of the year. Uh, a friend of mine, a buddy of mine now, who's also a great YouTuber, has a channel called Mike in the Woods. And he does a lot of really great stuff I, where he's I've taking electric vehicles. Yeah. He takes electric vehicles out and he does, you know, backpacking, camping, showing you the outdoors life. And he had this idea or this challenge for himself that he would either make it to 15,000 subscribers by the end of the year or shave his beard. And when I saw that, I hit him up and I said, let's make a beard pact. We each have to get to 15,000 to save our beards. But if one of us gets to 25,000, we save both. Oh, okay. Cool, so cool. We're really fighting for these beards, man. I know I'm probably working against myself, though, because there are plenty of people in the comments that are adamant that I shave. And oh, oh yeah, they say the... The Vita one, that's the wife, guys. So you're just going to have to get over that one. Yeah, so now they're not going to subscribe because they want to see you shave your beard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. That can definitely it's always struggle. backfire. Okay, cool. Um, so while we wait for people to ask questions, you guys can go ahead. Normally when I start my live streams, I do news for the first 10 or 15 minutes just to kind of get everybody in here and you know doing everything. But I figure um, I can start just by asking you questions. And please give us feedback. Um on audio and everything make sure that's good and nobody's complaining so that probably means it's good uh but if you need anybody if you need uh cause turned up or me turned up or or if our levels are off please let me know so one thing for the win yeah it's working working good working good i I think um so one thing i want to ask you about which is not really beta related um just briefly tell me about your and i've talked to you about it but your experience with your battery replacement because i find that super fascinating it's something people are always super worried about with electric vehicles that the battery's gonna Mm. die you replace it every twenty thousand miles well it wasn't that quick but you did actually uh have to replace your battery so so tell us about that briefly um because i see some stuff coming in I've already killed a uh, 50 kilowatt NMC battery or uh, nickel manganese cobalt for the battery geeks out there. Um, I have 2020 standard range plus model three. And I figured getting into the rideshare game, knowing that I will be supercharging two to three times a day, as much as I work that I would, you know, likely kill the battery earlier than most and sort of guesstimated. I might make 150,000 miles. I did some back of the napkin math based on some stats that I really can't pull off the top of my head right now for cycle counts and expected life. And I just figured worst case scenario, this thing is going to die shortly after I run out of warranty, um, which I was actually mistaken. I was corrected in the comments. And I think whoever corrected me that with mine, it was a hundred thousand mile warranty, not 120 because right. the long yeah, range the of performance range is hundred K. Exactly. Yeah. So sure enough, around 135,000, I started getting this message that basically said range may be reduced okay to drive schedule service soon and i'm thinking uh oh <laughs> what does this mean right. but there was no impact on charging speeds or or my range really it didn't seem like it was degraded much um and it was probably two three weeks later that that message changed to range reduced schedule service like now yeah. and i could barely pull five kilowatts off a supercharger i got up to 25 percent oh on my battery and it was it was capped. It was done. It's like got no more. Okay. So yeah, that answers my question. 
Yeah. Yeah. I called Tesla service and, uh, or I rather went through the app like we do. And they're like, yeah, you need a battery. And I was like, okay, here we go. Let's see. And I was sort of guesstimating, you know, around seven, $8,000. And my initial quote with labor and everything was 13,000. Yeah. So, and feel free to, to stop me and ask questions if you've got any in between or I'll just ramble on. Yeah, no, you're good. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so you at least had accounted for it. So it didn't catch you off guard. Mm-hmm. And for you, luckily it was a business expense because of your Lyft and Uber stuff. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And we, we knew my wife and I, that it would be a hefty payment when it does come, but that it would be a tax write off. And you know, early on decided to set aside a, a sort of maintenance fund, so to speak, some like a catch all for going through windshields, tires, whatever the case may be. And yeah, I've, I've been through several windshields too. That's right. something I'm really grateful to insurance for. Um, okay. So I will, um, bring up this comment. So it says lift with FS- FSD. That's kind of cheating. I like it. Uh, do you want to respond to that? <laughs> well, yeah, it's funny. I, I do get some customers that will jokingly say, Oh, so your job must be cake. This is no problem. Just let the car do all the work. And I say, well, no, it's more like I'm teaching a 16 year old how to drive and I'm constantly slapping it on the wrist. So it's more of a stress inducer than it is a, uh, a stress relief, right. but well, it provides a lot of great conversation. That's for sure. Yeah. And it's funny. Sorry. I'm, I'm managing things on the side. Uh, it's funny because it, it, it is kind of reminiscent of all the AI stuff we're seeing text-based things where people are able to write emails and, and make documents and everything just with AI. Uh, it's kind yeah. of like you're already doing that with the driving with Lyft. And of course it's not that simple. Uh, the stakes are a little higher, but you are being paid to provide that service when you're letting AI do a, a big chunk of it. Really? It's true. Yeah. I mean, that that is a valid thing. It's even though it may be, there's, there's a lot of mental energy that goes into staying ahead of beta when it wants to get wonky. It's still doing 98, 99% of the labor. If you want to think about it that way, it's doing all right. the heavy lifting. I'm just catching it when it decides it's going to be a little funky. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's good. And so do you find with your customers uh, that most of them are noticing it or cause, cause I, f- I feel like a lot of people are just like aloof to things that I'm kind of hyper-focused on or others are hyper and I'm sure I do it with other subjects too, but like you, you're, you know, everything about beta, you know, exactly what your car's doing, but then maybe like, are the customers like, you don't even notice. So there's a few different answers here. Most customers, I, I'd say the majority, like I was telling him at peppers, get in, don't care. You know, they're in their phones, listening to music. They'll arrive at their destination, none the wiser, you know, because my hands so are by funny. the wheel. I'll do some things like mid-turn. I might do this or like pop my knuckles or just. Are you to trying to get a reaction? Up. Okay, okay, yeah. Every now and then. It, it really depends on the vibe of the customer. If they are sure. kind of chatting amongst themselves, and I'll be a little bit more obvious to see if I can get one of them to give that WTF look, that moment like, wait, hang on, what's going on here? But there are some that when I do say, what'd you think of the ride and let them know it was self-driving that they're like, yeah, I was wondering, you know, they, they saw some things and they were like, I, th- I thought so, but right. that's a small percentage. Most people clueless unless we're actively engaged in conversation. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's kind of what I figured it would be like is people just don't even think about it and, and all of that. Blends in well. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> can, can you say what, one more time what you paid for your battery re- replacement? Oh, so the actual payment was 8,100. It came back, the quote had gone from 13 and they dropped it down. They were able to basically goodwill a lot of the services and parts from my old pack. And it's a remanufactured pack. It wasn't a brand new battery. It was- Right, that's what they do. Yeah, it was taken from another vehicle and reused. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, So somebody asked me, I'll just, I'll answer this real quick. Um, How is uh, FSD beta on thin or unmarked two-way roads? So there's been a little- uh, stir up with with Chuck and a couple other people that um, they are seeing their cars are breaking on thin roads when other vehicles are passing the other way, even like on painted roads, their car just breaks. I've when, seen that. Yeah, when it doesn't need to. But I have not experienced that, and I've even tried to find it. And I posted a video yesterday on Twitter, just a few seconds of passing by some cars on what I thought was a pretty thin road, and I didn't see it. So just to comment on that really quick, um, some yeah, people I haven't seen that either, but I'm also yeah. on 3.6 still. I don't yes. know if that's a 11.4. It's an 11.4 thing. Yes, it's an 11.4 yeah. thing. I have a bunch of other 11.4 specific things, but that can be, <laughs> if it comes up, we can talk about that later. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. So have you had any windshields break on, on your cars doing all this driving? I've, I've lost my actual windshield twice and my roof glass once. Oh my gosh. 
So that was just really bad luck. Yeah. Uh, a bolt or something small actually struck in between the two glass panels at the top of the car. Okay. Compromised both of them. So that was a good $2,200 repair. I mean, granted, insurance. I have zero comprehensive deductible, so oh, it's fully glass. covered by... Yeah, because I, I figure driving as much as I do, I'm likely going to go through some windshields. So Right, it, that makes USA sense. USA has got me there. Yeah, that's good. See, I never I do just, the the glass because I'm just and I've never I've never broken a windshield on a Tesla. I have, I got fifty thousand miles on my Model Three. I'm over thirty thousand on my Y. Our X has like eighteen or nineteen thousand. Actually, yeah, it's almost twenty thousand now. Never even had a crack in a windshield. Whereas my Ford Focus that I had before my Model Three, um, I had tons of cracks all the time, and then I did actually end up having to replace it. That was the first windshield I ever replaced. Yeah, I've learned to uh, look out for vehicles with mud flaps. I like people who are conscious to put okay. mud flaps on their vehicles. Uh, when you see a big old lifted truck on 35 inch wheels with no mud flaps, yeah, don't go behind it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, okay, let me see. Sorry, there's lots of, oh my goodness, lots of questions here. Yeah, no um, worries. Okay, uh, Brian does Uber on FSD as well. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Awesome. Um, Getting more people out there. Yeah, I've, I've been seeing comments about people that are starting to mess with it and do it a lot more. So that's exciting. Right. It seems it seems like a good idea. We got Alex saying uh, cause is the best. So thank you, Alex. <laughs> thank you, Alex. I, appreciate <laughs> it. I try, man. I'm really trying. Yeah. Um, Bugabones had, uh, I don't think so, uh, responding to the fragility of the Tesla glass. I had um, a nice rock smash into mine at 75 miles per hour made a loud thump, no chip, no crack. That's been my experience. I've been, of course, pelted yeah. with things and I haven't had anything, but I've heard the same thing from other people. They, they're like, oh, Tesla glass is, is so, uh, is so fragile. Um, let me ask you this. Did you, well, did you own cars before your Tesla? I mean, it sounds like you did, but. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Because I feel like a lot of people like get a Tesla and it's their first car and they're mm -hmm. like, they're like, would the t you have to replace the tires? Like, I don't know. It's, it seems like you see these <laughs> these really obvious things. I mean, to me, um, that are really obvious. And it's like, is this, is this your first car? I'm not sure why you're concerned about that. <laughs> well, in my background, I had a mechanic father, grew up on the drag strip and going to like AMA superbike races in Florida. And I, at 16, started working as a tire technician and followed the mechanic path. So oh, I'm, cool. I've always been around cars and fixing and yeah, so right. well well versed. And I can say that the glass is not fragile. Okay. It's just my luck that tires are picking up bolts and screws and dense metal things. And right. when those hit, it's like a gunshot. Like you know the difference between a rock and a dense metal bolt hitting your windshield. It's so loud. It's it's jarring. Yeah, um, it'll scare you. So I, I don't know if you can talk about your if you're if you want to, you don't have to, your your job. You've I think kind of interesting, but I don't know if you're allowed to no, I'm totally allowed to. I okay, yeah. I had been keeping it kind of on the back burner just oh, uh, breaking, to kind of keep news. the Yeah, yeah. This is not an official statement. <laughs> if so you don't want to say it, you I, don't have to, but <laughs> No, I'm excited to because I am a proud employee of Archimoto. Um I have been following them for years and I joined them back in uh May of twenty two. So I've just over a year that I've been with them. I'm a mobile service technician basically think of tesla mobile service but i do that for archimoto so That's i get awesome. to get hands on with these really funny bees and drive a lot of them it's yeah. a blast but it takes up a lot of my time that's why i'm not doing you know 1500 miles a week anymore right you know I, i'm trying to drive as much as i can to get as much content because it all kind of has this positive feedback loop the more i do uber and lyft the more content i get for sure but i'm often on the road to arizona nevada all over the place so it's a busy, um, busy world. This is a good question for you. And I have my own opinions about this, but what do you think of uh, PPF? Did you get it? I mean, you do tons of driving. Do you think it's worth it? Um, just I frontal? Uh, so I, mine, Mew is totally naked in that sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's got nothing. Uh, but in, And on that subject though, these cars are tough. I mean, I have no protection at all, and the only thing I have is what I sort of call his scratch over his eye, like on one of the headlights. There, mm -hmm. It looks like some, I don't even know, it looks like a claw basically went over it, and it kind of peeled some of the tint in the little carbon eyelid that I have on the light back, it, like something scratched it in the face. Aside from that, it's basically immaculate from wow. day one. So okay. I'm really impressed with that quality. It kind of flies in the face with some of the criticisms. 
that yeah. I've been told. But I bet it'd be even better if I did get some ceramic coating PPF. I just it wasn't in the funds at the time. Yeah, sure. No, I, I've I've never got that either. And if, I mean, of course, it will protect your paint, but I don't know. I've just never kind of saw the value. But my my Model Three, I remember the same thing. It didn't have because you're driving a standard range Model Three. My Model 3 got, you know, like one big rock chip on the driver's door, I remember. But then I just used the paint kit from Tesla and I fixed it and you can't see Mm. it anymore or you couldn't see it anymore. My Model Y, though, I'm noticing is a lot more little scratches and things kind of all over the place. It's the same paint color. Um, Same with us. Okay. Yeah, that's weird. I mean, maybe just because it's bigger, but... um, I think it's also because the body tapers back. So it's got oh, sure. thick hips and sure. the rocks will kick up and hit those back doors. That's, That's why point. I think I've heard, uh, it might've been on Ryan McCaffrey's well, Ride the Lightning Pod where he mentioned the PPF yes. on the back doors at least. I have that. I do have that because it came from Tesla. So oh, yes. okay. I let them put, put that on. Um, oh, thank you, Trent. Trent subscribed. Uh, <laughs> I was like, what's that? I don't know if you could hear that. I was like, what's that noise? <laughs> Um, no, no, yeah, it's not okay. coming through here. Okay, uh, yeah, so Tesla put that on the back door, so I have that, but I have it, like, all over my uh, front doors and my sides and even the rear, like, by the taillights. I think somebody scraped my car at some point, like, really, really uh. gently. I know, and I went back and looked at Sentry footage. I couldn't find anything. I'm not even sure that's what it is, but it looks like it to me, so, um, yeah, that's tough. But uh, <laughs> that's a big mug. Yes, I have lots of water. Um <laughs> <laughs> full uh i got full frontal ppf and a full coat of ceramic coating for 3600 sounds like not not a terrible price um no uh, yeah from what i've heard i had also uh when was it uh probably december of 21 i think is when i went a little bit crazy and i got all of my windows tinted chrome delete got the yoke mm. so i went a little crazy oh, yeah yeah spent a lot more money than i needed to <laughs> yeah sorry i know but the the tint especially during you know the the 2020 times we'll put it that way it came in handy i'm having to wear a mask and oh. not wear sunglasses yeah. yeah 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 that was brutal um all right i have another question here for you have you either um well it's for either of us but it, i'll give it to you for sure um have either of you had any accidents or close calls so far and how has it reacted uh in those i think we're talking about full self-driving yeah so There have been a couple of cases where I can't say that it was close to an accident, but the vehicle definitely moved in an evasive way to avoid something, which I'm sure you're used to when a cyclist or motorcyclist comes up next to you. The lane splitting here in in San Diego, California is legal. Well, okay. So technically it's not legal, but it's not illegal. It's sort of a courtesy. Okay. Um, Well, fun fact for everybody, but they're always coming in on the passing lane in between the passing lane and the other left lane. And the beta will move out of the way sometimes, sometimes it won't, but mm. that's kind of the extent of my experience. I've had some hard breaking scenarios. If, uh, no somebody's way. hopped out in the road downtown, but <laughs> yeah, okay. nothing that's made me think, Oh man, that was almost it. Yeah. I, I've had a few. Um, actually, I actually have one in one of my last videos on the highway. Um, sorry. I don't, I don't know if I introduced, I did introduce your YouTube channel, right? Cyberlift, subscribe to him. Um, <laughs> you're at almost a million views on the channel. I saw, so that's good. Um, I had yeah, one crazy uh, two videos ago, I think, where a guy on the highway, like he got in front of me, but like super close, like ridiculously close. Mm. And and Beta did move over a bit, but to be honest, it was late. It didn't technically need to, but like if I had been driving manually, I definitely would have moved the wheel to the right. Um, sure, now, yeah. Would I have been wrong doing that because I didn't need to? I, I don't think so, but Beta reacted a little late. Um, but yeah, it's good at, it's good at braking, that's for sure. <laughs> I think something's yeah, coming up. definitely. <laughs> it's really good I'm really that. glad that we're not still in like the 10.5 days where it would just slam on the oh brakes from gosh. like a thousand feet away from a pedestrian. I'm, I'm like, oh man. I'm glad I'm not the only one that remembers that because pre dot, uh, before 10.69 was like break, phantom braking so much like for everything. When nothing was there, it was, um, it was really annoying. Um... I guess we can talk about this one uh, from Brenton. It's for, we'll say both of us. When do you think Tesla will integrate? He tagged me, but for both of us, uh, integrate reversing into FSD beta. So, so you have, I'm sure, more miles on beta now than I do. Um, what do you think about this reversing thing? Because so let me go first. In the past, I used to be like, why can't the car reverse? Like we obviously have it in Summon and Smart Summon. The car, it can do it. So why haven't they put it into beta? Um, and I, I have some thoughts on to why not, but now I've kind of changed my mind and I actually don't think it's very important. Um, I, I think mm, yeah. it, it, if you do billions of miles, you'll come across situations where it probably needs to reverse. But 
for the majority of those miles, I don't think it's really helping. Um, what are your opinions on beta reversing ability? And like, have you come across times where you're like, well, now I got to do it because you can't reverse? So, yeah, I think the simplest answer to whether or not it's necessary is just thinking about it from a first principles mindset. Like the best move is no move. Like don't put yourself in a situation where you have to go into reverse. Sure. But there could be identifiers for where you're stuck in a one way tight scenario and the vehicle needs to get out to where it would be able to go in tight into like a reverse mode. But I'm reminded of something Chuck Cook said on the Emmett Peppers interview he did a little over a year ago where they were talking about reverse being incorporated. And he brought up a very good concern that what if you're in the middle of a situation where the vehicle decides it needs to go into reverse and then you need to intervene and hit the throttle or take over. Yep. What motor are you, are you in reverse? Are you going forward? For sure. Like what's going to happen now? So yeah, that's... I think it's an added complexity that isn't really worth the pains. Right. That, that's, that's probably my biggest thought. And I don't know if Chuck is the first person I heard say it or, or why, but yeah, one of my biggest thoughts is like, if, if the car is reversing, that can be very confusing for the human that's still technically in control. Whereas when yeah, you're exactly. using summon or smart summon, you can stop the car, but you're not controlling the back and forth. So you're not really in control in that aspect. Um, even if you sit in the driver's seat and you summon, if you touch anything, it just shuts off. So yeah. I, I totally agree. I, I don't think, I don't think it's worth um, having that mode because again, like you said, don't get in a situation where you need that. I think if you do enough miles, it's going to happen. <laughs> um, well, and I think it has its purpose too for, for summon conditions or backing itself into a supercharger one day when yes. that's autonomous. You know, it's, it's going right. to need to be able to do those things. But as far as general driving goes, it's better to maybe go around the block than to find yourself backing up and turning around, you know? Yeah. It's a little simpler that way. Right. Um. Okay, this this is from uh, Mike in the Woods. Welcome, Mike. He just wants to know real quick, um, before the battery died, what was your degradation like if you if you knew? Sorry, you're lagging a bit on my end. Yeah. I hope. Your sound is good. A little good. bit here, too. Okay, well, double Starlink fail. <laughs> um, your, your sound I'm still hearing sounds... you nice and clear, just a okay. little video skipping. Cool, that's most important. So, yeah, did you notice your battery degradation before you got any of those messages or anything? Yeah, so actually, uh, probably about a month or two before that, when I was up in Eugene, I started doing some real testing, like charger to charger. How many miles was I actually getting? Granted, those were mountain roads. Um, on the, on average, it was around 160 miles of range is what I was calculating, but it was going, you know, through a lot of valleys. But when I started getting to flat land on my own, and this is important, averaging 115 kilometers an hour or 71 miles an hour, not going 80. Thank you. I was able to get... I believe it was 81.2% of my original capacity. Uh, so I was getting just over hmm. 205 miles out of my battery still. Yeah, so only um, around it was 20% in, degradation. Yeah, it was it was very high 70s, low 80s on average over about 10 different test scenarios. So it all kind of averaged out around the 80% mark. So 20% with my heavy use, though, keep in mind, like, right, a lot right. of people were forgetting that I don't home charge at all. I, yeah, I think so, it's when you say heavy use, I think the more important part of that is the heavy supercharging. Supercharging. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's that's definitely it. But, you know, that matters because obviously, like, for you it matters. And I think, were you paying for your supercharging? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Because Tesla has, like, they're kind of iffy on, on businesses, you know, using supercharging. And I think as, like, an individual using Uber or Lyft, like, they're not going to care. Um, but like there was that one, somebody's you... going to be using it, you know, exactly. Yeah. Charter's they're going to get taken up either way. <laughs> right. There was the a company, you know, you, you, when we talked before you mentioned in California, um, the taxi oh, company. Yeah. yeah. And I think they had a little kind of back and forth with Tesla. Um, and it, they okay. ended up like coming to an agreement, like, okay, it's fine. Go ahead. Um, but you know, if you have this company that has especially free supercharging, not that you had that, but if you did, and now you're making money off the network and you're clogging up the network, it's like something they got to think about, but I think we'll get to it. That's point. a fair point. Yeah. yeah. So, um, okay. So this, this, uh, I like this question. What's the, I mean, not more than 150 miles. What's the longest distance you have gone using, um, FSD? I guess even if you had to charge and, you know, stop, like you can ignore that, I suppose. Uh, the longest distance in a single trip would have been my 19 to 20 hour trip up to Eugene, Oregon to get my training in with Archimoto. That was my, the reason for my journey up there. Okay. And the whole thing was done on 10, 11, two, my favorite branch, my, or, you know, prior to version 11. Oh, yeah, okay. It was, okay. uh, it was great from San Diego all the way up to Eugene, Oregon. And it was 99% self-driving because yeah. it was, I mean, well, 
yeah, <laughs> a 20 hour road trip. There's not much else to do on the highway. Right. Of course. And so it performed pretty well on the highway. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the biggest thing that stood out that was annoying would be the, I actually like it better when it'll just be efficient and chill on the right lane Me cruising, maybe a little bit slower. I don't need it to constantly be trying to go around people, which right. is why I love our new option for minimal lane changing. Mm -hmm. um, but that was maybe the only nuisance. I would actually, since you know that was before the or the merge, I would just hit the navigate autopilot button, so okay. that way it would just revert to standard autopilot while we're right. on the highway. Yeah, that when was I, the biggest complaint. When I would use navigate on autopilot, I would always keep uh, lane change confirmation on because same exact thing. Oh, there you go. Like if I'm not, yeah. you know. I, you're driving like the car's driving. I don't really have to do anything besides pay attention. I'm chilling. Like <laughs> I don't need to be moving all over and then, Oh crap. Now I'm in this lane. I got to get back over. I just don't care. I'd rather go f five miles per hour slower, you know, and just relax. Um, yeah. So, and you're watching thing. your energy efficiency go up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, know. Nice. I, I love that. It's so nerdy, but I love it. Um, and then, you know, the other thing I'll mention, which is kind of related to this is, so when you're doing the the FSD testing, I don't know if like you think about this. Um, I mean, I know you have the gauntlet where you've kind of devised a course that is difficult for the car and it's getting better and better. Um, but when you're trying to find things, if if your destination is too far away and you know, you're trying to test it for a video or just for your own interest, the car ends up, of course, it's just gonna take the highway, so that's boring. <laughs> or yeah. if there's no highway, it's just gonna take like a main road. So you end up just going straight for a really long time. And it's just like, okay, yeah. there's, there's nothing to test here. So it, it's funny because on the one hand, like when I do my, I try to do a downtown drive and really, uh, you know, um, stress the system and test it, I end up putting like five or six destinations so that it keeps going in these difficult spots and has lots of turns and blah, blah, blah. But when you then go back and do like a normal drive where you're just like, oh, I have to go to CVS or, or whatever, the car's really good. <laughs> I mean, it'll do yes. most of that. But then it's kind of boring because there's not like a lot of challenges. But it shows that the system is at a point where you can do a lot of the driving, which I'm sure is exactly what you see driving Lyft. There's nothing special. Mm -hmm. You just like are taking people A to B. Um, and maybe here and there you'll, you know, see something. But um, yeah, it's a lot of the same. It, it actually, the way you were handling Ann Arbor is what gave me the idea for the downtown shuffle here. I would basically put, you know, five different waypoints around downtown and then. Let's see what kind of craziness would happen because there's a lot of streets that would get closed off for deliveries or restaurants and all the one ways. And you really, to your point, have to put the system in a lose lose situation to really see it get wonky most of the time. Otherwise, it's kind of boring, you know, <laughs> which is just how good it's getting. Right, for sure. I, uh, I screwed up. <laughs> um, hold on a second. Um, I, oh, don't do it. Ugh. Okay. I might have to call you back on another service because I forgot Zoom. Like, I don't pay for it. Yeah, right. Who pays for Zoom? It has a time limit. <laughs> I just got oh, the, no. I just got the message. And it's like, you're running out of time. Um, I mean, I could have clicked upgrade, but um, <laughs> then I have to, you know, like, ah, okay. Well, that's okay. We're learning. That's everybody. This is my, our first one. This is why. <laughs> yeah. um, but maybe I can. Smooth it out, you know? Yeah, we'll figure it out. Uh, maybe I can call you back on. Um, Google or something, um, or send you the link. So let sure. me, yeah, let, whatever works. Let me grab you another question really quick, and then I'm gonna work on that. So you're not, um, you're not talking to me with this question. You're gonna talk to somebody. Collab of the century. Thank you, Divided Shark. That's very nice. Um, let's see what do we got here. Okay, uh, talk about. So the question is, any ideas when school? No, we ha we don't work for Tesla. We have no idea. You know what? I've kind of made a joke the other day. I'm like. I don't even know if Elon has any inside information because he's always wrong. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> any ideas when school speed limits slash signs will be handled by FSD beta? Do you think this will require LLM integration? So if you want to talk about that for a second while I try to fix this mistake I made. So whether or not it can handle school, like the changes in speeds when you're dealing with school zones and such. Well, I mean, I don't know. It doesn't sound like the hardest problem to solve. It's just reading a different zone or just maybe laying out the area around the school or where you need that change with a type of um, bubble or zone the car goes in and realizes, okay, we got to cut down to whatever it is, 10 miles an hour. Uh, I don't think that's going to be a really difficult problem to solve. It's probably just not put in because there's bigger fish to fry at the moment, kind of like the summon such, you know, everybody wants the advanced someone to come back and be able to pick them up from the grocery store and such. I wouldn't be surprised if that kind of thing was handled within the year, though. I mean, it depends on how high it is on the priority list. 
I, I hear you. Um, all right, I'm gonna send you this link really quick on Twitter um, in case we get booted. I don't see any messages. Oh, remaining time. We got seven minutes left, so that's pretty good. Um, I mean, maybe we'll just- At least end... it's not immediate. <laughs> no, I know, I know. Maybe we'll just end up cutting it short because um, that's pretty short, but we'll see. Um, people can yell at us if I they want to- I got the us. link. Okay, cool. I'm not in there yet, but because um, I can't obviously do both, that would not be good for bandwidth. So, yeah, sorry, everybody. not. This is why I warned you in the beginning. It's the first time. <laughs> There's probably good. I thought I had planned for everything. We practiced this beforehand and everything, but you know those things happen. All right. Um, sorry if this has been asked already. Is FSD beta wide again before I blow another 200 subscription? So yes, it seems that's the case. Um, everybody I've kind of talked with, it doesn't seem like 100% of people are getting it immediately, but it seems like everyone's getting it within hours which is pretty good. So from what we know today, right now, you should be safe to subscribe. I don't work for Tesla. I can't promise you'll get beta on your car, but I have no reason to believe you will not get beta within 24 hours. It sounds like you get it in like two hours, but. Yeah, and the rollout's usually always staggered because they're taking in the information as more and more vehicles are used. They're still looking at those safety metrics. So it's it's gonna be probably a lengthy staggered rollout and just hopefully you're higher up on the list than the guy next to you. Right, yeah, and sure, <laughs> if, if you know, if something comes to light with a huge bug or something, I mean, they'll pause that immediately. So at this point, yep. I don't think with 11.3.6, which is what they're pushing, I don't think that's going to happen, but there's, there's no promises. I mean, I don't want to be like, yeah, you're going to get beta, and then you don't. Like, I, I, I can't promise that, but it seems like you will. I wonder if it's still on the, you know, if your software is already too far ahead, if you won't be able to get it. Is uh, that, no, you know no, 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 no. The, the beta is, the, the new build they made is that nobody has passed that. So oh, sweet. like, so the Thanks. one that came out is 2023.12.10, uh, I believe. And mm. whatever it is, say, say it's that my model X is on the latest one, 2023.12.9. So they basically made it. So, you know, oh, you'll get it. Um, this is a really good question. I think you could probably talk a lot about, um, isn't that, uh, and I actually agree with this question. I'd love to hear what you say. Um, isn't that, sorry, I'm trying to adjust something here. Uh, isn't that inconvenient to not have a home charger and only rely on superchargers? Uh, oh, it cut off some of it. At that point, why get a Tesla? Well, it's really not a limiting factor when you, I, and I mean, to the point of the person asking the question, it's a good question because I get it a lot from people that I'm giving rides to all the time because they expect that I can charge at home. And then I tell them that like most people out here in San Diego, we have the street park. We don't have driveways or the ability to to plug in at home. I saw somebody with a uh, with an extension cord rigged all the way out to their Tesla. Never would advise that. That's uh, that's it's definitely dangerous. not good. But no, I mean to be blunt, it's really it's no different in that sense to getting gas, except it doesn't stink and you still have a better vehicle. You know, and it maybe takes right. fifteen to twenty minutes to get yourself moving. For me, I usually am stopped for maybe twenty twenty five, because also because of what I do, driving as much as I do, getting that 20, 25 minutes to just chill, maybe watch some YouTube, go grab a snack, it's much appreciated. So I don't I don't mind stopping yeah, have a you know, after time. four or five hours, exactly. And I usually work it around, you know, if I'm going to the gym, the charger is right down the street from the gym, so I'll go charge up, throw back pre-workout, hit 24-hour <laughs> fitness. It all just, it, it flows. And that's the biggest thing I tell most customers that are... Yeah worried about range anxiety, road tripping and charging is that after your first couple of days, I don't even think a week after your first couple of days, all your concerns melt away and you kind of giggle like, Oh, this isn't hard at all. Like this is cake. Yeah, no, that's, that's a really good answer. And I totally agree with the road trip part. Um, okay. That's good. Cause I, I actually, I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of in the camp. I used to be, I haven't really thought about it in a while, but like, if you can't charge at home, you probably shouldn't, you know, get an EV. That was kind of always my, um, my take on it. But I think it really depends on your uh, individual kind of uh, situation. And like you said, it flows. Like, that's such a good way to put it. It works yeah. for you. And, and kind of to be forced to take that break, I think, is huge sometimes. It is an underrated feature, is what yeah. I'll call it, well, of, of and, being able to stop. And that's what we notice on road trips, too, is, you know, you think, like, oh, my gosh, you're going to add. So we went Michigan to Florida, and I think we spent... Mm. Uh, I can't remember now. Dang it. Uh, like five hours charging one way or something. I added it, about four on the way to Eugene. Okay. So, you know, and it sounds like a lot. Well, and, and for us, we, the car was ready before us. Almost, not every time, but almost every time we were taking care of the yes. kids. We were taking care exactly. of the kids. So, 
it's like this thing where like, oh my gosh, you tell someone that and you know, right off the top, they're like, oh, I could never. And like, you don't get it. You're not sitting, yeah. staring at a wall for five hours. You get 20 minutes here and 30 minutes there and you're walking around and you're talking and it, it like make life, it makes life better. It really does. So that's a really yeah, good that time flies by. <laughs> you don't notice it really. Yeah. It sounds crazy from the outside, but then you feel silly when you're on the inside and you go, wow, that used to be a concern. Right. Definitely. <laughs> um, I want to answer this for Matt. Uh, I haven't subbed yet to FSD, so I'm assuming I'll need to before I get any update. Yes. You will not be updated mm -hmm. to, um, tr uh, what am I saying? Uh, 2023 .10, 2023.12.10, you will not receive that update unless you actually subscribe to FSD. So, and again, it probably isn't going to come immediately. I have seen it come like within minutes, but it may also take a few hours. Well, and just in case anybody's worried too, if you forget to pay or whatever, I've done it plenty of times and my car is reset. You don't lose beta. You don't go back. When you resub, you have the same software you had when, you know, it canceled. So, yeah. You know, if it falls off, it's fine. Just go in, resubscribe, and you're right back to rolling. Right, right, right. Okay, our time's about to run out here. Why don't we end this Zoom call really quick? And let me, can you call me on the other one? Yeah, um, let's give it a shot. And make it work. Okay, well, we should be good. Sorry, everybody. This should only take like one second, so see you over there. All righty. Okay, so we have that. And let me get rid of this. Sorry, sorry. Oh, you can't even see me here. Let me put my, um, I'm not going to put my webcam up. <laughs> you can just stare at that text. I'll keep talking so people know I'm here. Apologize, everybody. I need to switch over to Google Meet. So this is my first time doing, um, doing this, like, interview thingy uh, with, with uh, Kaz. And so, oh, that's not, that's not right. Hold on. And so I kind of messed something up. Here we go. Switch to here. Uh, I kind of messed something up. And I need to start a new meeting with him really quick. So there we go. I got this open. I'm going to invite him now. I sent him the wrong link. There we go. So he should be joining. And let me just see. So this should be good here. Oh, hey, he's here. Um, admit. Hey, I hear you. Okay, good. Uh, hold on one second here. So I can see, I don't know if you care, but I can see your last name on there. I don't know if you can adjust that to turn it off um, bef Ooh, before see. I put you on the stream. How do I do that? Um, Let us see yeah, here. I don't know. The email I'm using here doesn't have my last name, so. Um, oh, I do see that. Okay. Yeah. How do I... Hopefully you can do that. Um, for now, what I'm going to do is I'll put you huh. on like there. There. Now they can't see it. <laughs> see, like, there we go. I got, I got settings, general. Part of your face. <laughs> let me see how that, let me see how that looks on the stream. Oh, actually, if I put it, well, I'll just leave it safely like that. You're pretty much blocked, so you're safe for now. But um, I, yeah, I don't know how to actually adjust that. Okay, that's fine. I'll leave you like this. It's also got me on mirrored. I wonder if there's a way to swap that. I don't nope. mind so much. You're all good. You're fine. They, they can't see you, so you're good. Um, put this down there. Okay, so let's get back to the questions. That was a good, smooth transition. Please update us again if um, sound and everything is good. Wow, I am lost. You guys are chatting it up in here. Holy moly. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's a lot of people talking. Um, okay, sorry. A little rough. I'm catching up. Uh, I need this window. Okay. Zoom wants their money. They're not going to get it. <laughs> to Discord it is. Hey, Discord is probably a good idea too. I could do that in the future. Thank you. StreamYard. Um, let's see. I didn't read this. Should I click it? No. What if they said something bad? Like, uh, okay. We'll talk about Cybertruck for a second. Uh, Breton asks. Oh, let's go. Um, okay. All right. All right. Yes, because your name is Cyberlift, so we should talk about that. Yes. Um, do you think Tesla would be able to make a 500-mile Cybertruck for under 79K given that the Silverado does 450 miles at that price? And what do you think is the battery size in the Chevy U? So I'll, I'll make a quick comment on that. Um, yes, sure. absolutely, I believe Cyber uh, Tesla would be able to do that. Um, I don't think they will, but I think they definitely have the ability, especially like in time. Now let's be clear, the Silverado um, is like a work truck. 
So it's like really bare bones from my understanding. So you're not going to have a lot of stuff in there. So it's a little cheaper to produce. My guess for the battery is it's probably, I don't know if this is right, going to just use the battery from the Hummer. So now you're like over 200 kilowatt hours to get that 450 miles. Looks like they can't miles. actually see you. Oh, you can't see me? Oh, they can't see me? Sorry, oh, on you like that. no, yeah. you're good. Thank you for Got telling you me. Out. There you go. <laughs> it's because I was live there. I'm a little mini one. Can I make it? I don't want to do that. Hold on. See, I'm screwing up here. Hold on. It's a learning experience. Yeah, well, you know, I got to be careful with what I'm doing over here. How? No, don't do that. Okay, that's better. Let's get you over here. Uh, okay, you guys can have a little mini. I'll be small up there. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's my thought is I, I bet it's using the Hummer battery, but okay. Um, what, what are you, what are you thinking about Cybertruck? So I have no doubt that Cybertruck will be able to, to handle 500 miles of range for, you know, a lot less. You got to remember Tesla's supply chain, their, their, what's the best way to put it? Um, their costs, you know, their reduction they've made on their footprint, the improvements they're making with the 4680s and such. Uh, to put it bluntly, GM's Ultium battery is a probably, well, I think it was 204 kilowatt. Uh, let's see, what did the Monroe team use when they pulled it apart and tried to hold back the puke? They called it. Oh, that was so approach. funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, the, the GM products are so heavy using outdated battery technology that it's, I don't even think they're comparable. I, I have no problem thinking that the Cybertruck will be able to do 500 miles of range under $75,000. Now, will it be that price? I don't think so. Um, no. I don't think the 500 mile range will be below 80. I think it's, if I'm being honest, probably 80, 85,000. Could they? Sure. Yeah. I mean, they could cut all of the cars down by probably 20,000 and break so, even. So you think 80 or 85,000 for the 500 mile range? Unfortunately, wow. I, I do think that it, I think that's low. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I think it'd be higher. Than, well, well, here's my thought: is well, okay. So for the 500 mile range, yeah, I think it would be a lot more. I mean, think compare it to compare it to uh, Model X, right? That's a hundred kilowatt hour battery. You're getting mm -hmm. 330 miles of range, let's say. And if you make the Cybertruck with the exact same battery. Let's say it's slightly more efficient than the Model X, but it's probably less efficient. But let's just say it's the same efficiency. Now you have a 100 kilowatt hour battery from Tesla that gets you 330 miles. And they're going to price it that much under a, you know, under a Model X or something. I just, I just don't see it happening. And then the other part about that, and this might not matter in the future, but if they're over 80K, they're going to be way over 80K because of the tax credit. Because if they can come in under 80K... Then the tax credits there, the federal. If they are above 80k, then they might as well crank it up a bunch because people are going to buy it anyway, <laughs> and they've missed the tax yeah. credit. So, and I don't think there's a pickup right now that qualifies for the tax credit uh, that you can buy. I don't think any of them qualify because the not even the lightning, huh? I think the lightning has the batteries are from another country or something. Oh yeah, I think um, right. yeah. So I don't know if it gets the partial, maybe. Uh, but now the I top, think it will get the partial. Yeah, the top trim though of the Lightning is over eighty grand now, so that doesn't qualify either. Um, so yeah, between the the construction process of the Cybertruck and the reduced footprint plus the stainless steel, I don't know. I think a lot of the cost reduction in the manufacturing process will be where we realize the reduction in pricing, because you know the Model X is a very complex, difficult vehicle to build with a lot of specific robots and such. I mean, Tesla at several points called it a, a stand in hubris, you know, that they probably wouldn't have made it if they could go back in time as much as people do love it. Right. I think with the reduction in complexity, you'll see a lot of cost savings. And I lean pretty heavily into Tesla's mission to accelerate the transition. And you're not really going to move the needle forward with an unaffordable truck. Right. So I think they would probably be willing to take a hit to, to get more of them out there. Uh, but yeah, I really, it's hard to say where that pricing is going to stand. I don't think it'll be a quad motor. I know a lot of people still think right, that, no. but after the semi truck came out, tri motor, yeah. why would they have an extra motor if they don't need it? No. And, so and I'm I'll, thinking dual and tri. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever said this, so this might be exclusive for this, this live stream right now. Um, when I was in Texas, not this, I went, you know, this month, but last year, April of 2022, I talked to somebody and you know, of course, we thought Cybertruck was going to be quad motor at that point. And I 
you know, was talking to this whoever and I was like, yeah, so it's going to be quad motor now. And they kind of look at me like, you know, and I'm like, no, no, no that's, 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 uh, Elon tweeted it. That's not a secret. Like we can talk about that. And they're like, eh, I don't know. And I'm like, like, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. I'm like, what? So this, even back then it was kind of known it wasn't going to be quad motor. Um, so, you know, now it's, uh, kind of confirmed again. He said they're going to do tri-motor. And there's even the possibility they start out with a dual motor. But the thing about that is motors are not the expensive part <laughs> for Tesla. It's the batteries. And then obviously yeah. for Cybertruck, because it's brand new, and Elon keeps saying, which is kind of breaking my heart, he keeps saying like, oh, it's, yeah, this is hard to produce. Like, we're going to try to, he just tweeted today. He's like, we're going to try to start production. That was just my leg on the chair, I swear to God. Uh, <laughs> um, he, <laughs> I have shorts on him in a leather chair. Um, he, he was like, <laughs> um, he was like, we're trying to get production started this year. It's been really hard because it's all new. And it's like, oh my gosh, this thing's gonna be so expensive. But um, or even later, like I'm pretty, I'm pretty set on production this year. Um, you know, maybe, maybe no customer deliveries this year, but I'm pretty set on uh, uh, employee deliveries happening Q3. I'm pretty oh, set yeah, on that for sure. Well, I know, and even at the you saw at the investor day, um, they had the delivery event. You know, later this year, mm -hmm. so. That usually means late December <laughs> Yeah, when it well, comes to a, an event like right. that. But. Yeah, he, he said quarter three before um, – he said aiming oh. for quarter three. He tweeted that before the investor day. So, yeah, everybody's like, oh, September. <laughs> that is going to be September, the end of quarter three. Yeah. Um, but then, yes, they kind of doubled down on all of that um, at the investor day. I mean, they didn't say a date then, but they did say – later this year we're going to have the delivery event so that made me really excited that they said it again and then robin denholm also had you know said good things so um all right we're yeah, of course just... in, in elon fashion hyping up that it'll be better than expectations which really makes me think there's got to be some pretty impressive things happening with these 40, 80 cells right so, yeah, exactly so that's gonna be the backbone of the performance so. right that or uh, whatever's in the bed in terms of the plugs and uh mm. all the features you know it's hard because you never know <sighs> Not much has really leaked. Like we've seen the four wheel steering is maybe there um, and, and stuff like that. We know it has air suspension and can do this kind of thing. So we don't know how much he thinks is still a secret. You know, I always kind of think about that sure, yeah. versus what is actually unknown. So what do you think about it becoming a five seater versus having a six seat option? I was a little bummed. Yeah, I wanted the six seat, but I, it doesn't. I don't care that much. Yeah, it's not too impactful. Yeah, no. I mean, most trucks have that, and I was like, oh, that that'll be a nice option, like especially if the kids have you know friends and we need to take a couple friends with us. But um, uh, they can only have one friend now, so <laughs> that's what they get. Right. Choose wisely. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Definitely. All right. Let me look at some more of these questions here. Uh, Bugabone says, "I realized I haven't been to a gas station in eight months. I don't miss it. I, isn't that crazy? Time flies." Yeah. Well, when you realize that you haven't gotten an oil change in forever. You no, know, or worried about spark plugs or right. power steering fluid. Well, and again, things, it's especially for what you're doing, again, you don't drive as much as you once did, but for all the driving you're doing, that stuff is is crazy. And I remember even oh, for yeah. our uh, Equinox we had, you know, before my wife got a Tesla, we didn't, you know, she it was a lease, so she only had 12,000 miles a year. So it's not like she was driving that much, but even mm -hmm. that, the oil changes were such a burden and you got to like take time off work sometimes. Then you go to the dealership, you sit there for hours while they come over and they're like, oh, do you want us to change your wiper blades? Do you want to pay for new, you know, it's just like, oh my gosh, like, so. Here's a list of 20 things that are all going to break tomorrow if you don't buy them now. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, Mike in the Woods says, you're doing great, fellas. Thank you. Yeah, StreamYard. I know StreamYard's supposed to be pretty good, but again, I don't really want to pay for anything. Uh, the Driven Dad. I, gr I agree. This collab is fire. Thank you. That's good to hear. Hey, hey. I'm glad everyone's loving it. I was really excited for this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, this is, it's super fun so far and it seems like everybody's enjoying it. So that's good. Um, okay. Let's, let's see what you think about this one. Um, uh, from pixels without hardware depth perception, like radar, lidar, and even ultrasound. How do you think Tesla will deal with optical illusions? Would love to see a test with a car painted on a road. Wow. That's, that's pretty good. What do you, what do you think about that? Well, I mean, that depends if you're talking about what we see when you're driving down a highway and it's really hot and you have this sort of refracted moisture off the road that's projecting, you know, a little bit of a mirage. I don't think something like that will be very important because, you know, our, our cameras, our vehicles are sensing, I believe, up to about 200 meters, maybe 250. 
-hmm. And that mirage is well beyond that. So I would consider things like that to be negligible. Okay. I'm curious what they mean, though, by, you know, a painted car. Well, just um, like, so, because if, so pretend, like, if, if you know, you paint a car uh, on the road, you know, in a, a way where it looks real, or even just, like, say you mm -hmm. paint it on a piece of cardboard or something, you know, to, to you or I, unless it's, like, a really good painting, that's not going to even come close to fooling us. Like, oh, look at that sure, thing. yeah, yeah. But a computer, you know, may be tricked by that. And I actually do have a, a real-world example of this that it seems, I think, Tesla has, has fixed. And they did call it out in the release notes. So I noticed in the version... 10 branch uh it was raining and and it has to be the right lighting conditions this doesn't always happen but it was raining the road is wet and it's slick and it's in extremely reflective it's like a mirror again this doesn't mm. always it doesn't always happen um but if the lighting is right and and everything you'll get this effect and i i actually posted this on twitter because i got the i used the um the century cam video but as my car was coming up to an intersection on the other side of the road there were uh, like a closed road sign and some barrels and stuff, nowhere near where we needed to be, but it reflected into the road. It reflected into the road where we were driving. And my car started, kind of did this to like dodge it. And at first okay. I was super confused, but then I looked at the display and I go, oh my gosh, you think there's actually barrels here that you need to dodge because of the reflection. And it, it I think it figured it out. I don't remember if I took over or not. Um, and I was like, this is crazy. Like, this is gonna be so hard to solve. And then just a few months later, we got a release note that called out that exact scenario. And they didn't put my name in the release notes, like Chuck, but <laughs> they, they called out that exact scenario and they said, uh, improved reaction to reflections in the road uh, on wet roads or something like that. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I had the same scenario come up because I, I had that happen a few times. And after the update, it hasn't made the same mistake since. So, you know, the way I answer these questions, because I'm not like a, I don't code, I'm not that technical in all of these mm -hmm. things. I more, of course, come at it from a, a consumer perspective. But Tesla's uh, idea and, and the way they go about things is if you can do it, then so can the computer. So can the cameras. Yeah, and typically better than you should be able to. It, I figure it's a matter of training time. At least really eventually. Solution. Right, yeah. at least eventually. And, and, and think about it this way too, like, I'm sure you've made a mistake in that same way where you thought an optical illusion was real or you whatever. I remember one time I was mm -hmm. walking into the parking lot and it was super sunny and I was looking, of course, at my phone like I am 24 seven um, and I was walking and we have flags in the parking lot at my work and the way the wind moved the flag, the shadow of the flag like went near my feet and I went like, went like this. I like stepped back as yeah. if something had just run in front of me and I was going to trip over it. So, you know, it can happen and it's not the end of the world. And I very quickly realized and corrected my, you know, trajectory and everything. Um, so you could you could have those issues with a, a self-driving car, but as long as it doesn't lead to catastrophe, you should be okay. And I think the answer to that is just more data. You know, it, it, when it's introduced to those things, you can train the system to beat the obstacle. I don't think it'll be that difficult. Right. Or at least it definitely won't be insurmountable. You know, I don't want to assign it to be an easy task. Right. No, for sure. <laughs> this one's funny. Um, could Tesla make the future hardware for bumper camera, which is not confirmed, by the way. Cybertruck has a bumper camera, but will it come to other cars? We don't know. Um, could they make that on a gimbal or swivel? Um, any ideas on front and rear side-facing bumper cameras? What do you think? Uh, so I, I definitely would respectfully shoot down the idea of a swivel because you're adding more moving parts, which is one of the biggest criticisms of trying to scale up LiDAR. I mean, there were that fantastic video by Kai SEV showing the Waymo vehicle. You see all the sensors on it, all the parts that are involved. We don't want to add more parts. <laughs> right. I like to think about something Elon said when doing a Starship tour, was that if you don't self adding parts back in, you're not deleting enough parts. Right. <laughs> when you basically get to a point that you've taken away too much. So, yeah, no swivel. But... Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't. I've seen a lot of concern around needing to get the hardware for before you know robo taxis can be a thing, or needing bumper cameras and such. I'm sure there's advantages to having them in different locations, but I don't think the problem is, or I don't think that it's a limiting factor. From what I've seen, the improvements are good with what we have, and there might be ways to just make it better with different vehicles. Like you would have a different camera set up on the semi, a different camera set up on the pickup truck. So I don't know. I mean, they can always add and make it more efficient if they discover something, but I think right. why fix what isn't broken? Yeah, I agree. I think Tesla tries to avoid all of those. Um, oh no, thank you, Driven Dad. I appreciate that. She's telling me about StreamYard. Um, I think that Tesla 
does its best to avoid all that complication for sure. And also they try to make all their vehicles have as many of the same parts. Uh, it looks like yeah, commonality. Yep. Yeah. It looks like if Highland is real, it's getting the model S and X steering wheel, you know, with the capacitive button. So to have the same steering wheel in all four of those cars, that's a huge reduction in different parts. You know, you need to exactly. uh, buy or make or whatever they do. So, um, yeah, swivel is definitely not going to happen. Um, for that, you just need a sufficiently wide camera. But, you know, I really, I'm not as smart as the autopilot team. Not even close. Like, I, I never yeah, would think I am. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> I can be a critic. And from my experience, it doesn't mean it'll never be fixed. Some side-facing cameras may, would make a world of difference with high-speed cross-traffic. They really would. Um, that's a fair point. Yeah. The, you know, there's these little situations and, you know, don't get me wrong. It's not like every drive. I'm like, Oh, if I had cro you know, side facing cameras, it would have been perfect. But you know, every once in a while you get in that situation that happens and you're like, okay, if Tesla's vehicles are going to be driving, you know, 10 or 20 million miles a day, they're going to come across this scenario multiple times a day. Yep. And they have to do it. Well, <laughs> so, um, that's a good point. It's not a problem until it is. And yeah. In that situation, like, darn it, this would be really useful. Yeah, that's fair. I know, exactly. I find um, myself in a lot of situations where, uh, like on the new gauntlet, for example, there's a yield where it's on a negative, or sorry, on a, on a declining road coming up to a blind mm -hmm. left, and you know you got to inch forward and really do the peek around. <laughs> I know the cameras can't see it well. Yeah. So that stands out right there. I know. And, you know, they do have 360 cameras. It does see all around the car, but it's like, can the camera that's looking in that direction see far enough? They know more than mm -hmm. I do, so, you know, um, it, it's hard to say. When it looks like Hardware 4, when we actually saw the details, is that the cameras are all in the same place. Yeah, there's right? the only difference is, I mean, the cameras are higher resolution, and then sure, the yeah. front-facing camera, there's only two instead of three. So they actually removed a camera. Wow. <laughs> I wonder if they got rid of main and just kept the telephoto and then fisheye. I don't know. I don't I don't, know. Yeah, I'm not sure which two they kept, but there's only two up there now. And then in the current, so here's my little, I'll, I'll say it, my little theory. Um, the current SNX, if you buy a new SRX today, you get hardware four. So you get the new computer, mm -hmm. you get the new camera set up, and there's a dummy camera in the, the three. So there's in the housing. So they're still using the same housing, the same setup. It's just one of those cameras isn't real. Um, so what I'm thinking is hardware four is something different with more cameras. I have no evidence for this. It's just my thought. Sure. And they, they basically haven't changed the production of SNX yet to incorporate those other cameras. I I think once Highland comes out, then I'm finally, you know, if it has the same camera set up, then I, I'll finally be convinced, okay, they're not changing the cameras. Yeah, I was going to say, Highland might be the debut there. Right. If it beats Cybertruck. As well, of, and again, a different vehicle platform, so I don't think Cybertruck would be indicative of what's going to be on the other side. Exactly. Course. Right, yeah. As of today, I do think camera changes are coming. If I'm wrong, I'll be like, yeah, okay, I'm wrong. That makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah, nobody would have more data than Tesla. To know. Exactly, yeah. yeah like, <laughs> For sure. they, they didn't just throw the cameras on and say, yeah, it looks good. Let's not even think about it. Like they know what they knew yeah. what they were doing. Um, well, with so. continuous improvement, they're not going to look at something. that's like, no, this is clearly a better way of doing things. We're going to ignore it. <laughs> oh, for sure. No. Yeah. They, they'll yeah. definitely improve what they need to. Um, this is, uh, this is a good one. Well, I mean, not on the FSD topic, but uh, bug of bones is saying, uh, what do you think the two new uh, models Tesla is working on are? Do you have any ideas on that? Oh, yeah. I've been giving that a lot of thought, actually. Okay. Um, my initial thought was between it being the smaller Robotaxi hatch and a van, but I've since changed my mind. Okay. I do think it's going to be the small, maybe hot hatch four-door vehicle for sure. Uh, what people have, I think, incorrectly categorized as the Model 2. Yeah. You know, it'll get its own name whenever that comes out. But the other vehicle, I think it might be something weirder. I think back to what Sandy Monroe said. Uh, that it might be something that we're just not expecting at all. You know, it's something that's built around RoboTaxi that might not have a standard seat orientation or human controls. Um, that It's hard to say. It, one could say it might be something in the van field to tackle van life. I know a lot of people have been excited about that. Yeah. But I would bet that the that second unknown product, because it's not Optimus, it's, that's clearly talked about right. separately. Right. I think it's going to be a, a weird RoboTaxi vehicle. Yeah. Like a level five type vehicle. Yeah. You got me thinking. I actually, I think maybe like that van idea is, is like 
could be the same thing as what you said also not being the van <laughs> right you're like well van but yeah. actually maybe a robo taxi dedicated because you know i think maybe like a canoe vehicle type weirdness, exactly but right focused on level five yes yeah. um i you know i think people forget but at cyber rodeo so in april 2022 elon did say they were working on a dedicated robo taxi thing and everyone was like what mm-hmm. like that was kind of big uh, surprising news um, well, instead of put it into one category, like that being the compact new $25,000 car. Right. Yep. But, um, so I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. I think those are two separate things. Yeah, for sure. I was really excited to see the silhouette though, because I'm a big fan of like the Focus RS sized sporty hot hatches. Mm-hmm. And that's what that made me think of. Something fun, small, nimble. Yeah. I really want to see what it actually looks like. It's probably going to have some hints of the Highland design, maybe mixed with the Model Y. Oh, yeah. Right. That's a good yeah. point. Who knows? Um, and he did say that uh, Tesla's done with the model naming after Cybertruck. So, um, Makes all sense. Right. I think they only wanted it until they finished the sexy acronym, right? He yeah. Like the Model right. Y, it didn't make sense anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, let me do a couple more here, and then we're going to call it because we're getting close to our time here. Um I like this one from uh, Ryan Rainey. He said, I suppose the front bumper camera on the Cybertruck might help with parking and the elimination of ultrasonic sensors. I hear you, but I feel like if that's the case, like Tesla would do that for all the vehicles. Um, I mean, plenty of people park their pickups with no front. I- I'm I'm very intrigued by that front bumper camera on the Cybertruck because Elon clearly says Cybertruck has hardware four. So is hardware four just staring us in the face? Is it literally just adding that bumper camera? And what does that even help with? Like, why does it even need that? Like, <laughs> I don't feel like, I, I know there's a blind spot there, but I don't feel like for self-driving, that's really a critical part of where the car needs to see. Again, maybe for parking, like like Ryan said, but uh, beyond that, I don't, I, there's better places for cameras, I'm, in my opinion. Sure, I'm almost wondering, because thinking about it from you know a truck owner perspective, it's not exactly the undercarriage camera for getting off road that you would expect in some vehicles. Right. Um, but I could see an application for that, that forward camera being something useful in a larger vehicle, especially like a semi truck too, but a good way to see if you're going to clear an obstacle or maybe go over a rock in front of you and get a measure of clearance. I don't know. It's maybe some application that's more truck specific, getting into the backwoods, dealing with some uneven terrain versus what we would normally associate with city street driving. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the off-roading aspect is huge. But like you said, usually those are in a slightly different spot. They're more like yeah. between the front tires or something, if, if I uh, know exactly. correctly. Yep. Um, I think that's where they put it in the, uh, the Hummer, if, he, if I'm right. Yeah. Or did Rivian do that too? Did Rivian do an undercarriage uh, camera? I don't think they did. Yeah, I don't know. I can't remember, actually. I, I should know either. that. <laughs> yeah, I know. You, you know. You're like in this space, like, I should know everything, but you can't. Um, all right, I got one more question for you here, and then we'll call it. Uh, make sure, everybody, you subscribe to both of us, Cyberlift and Dirty Tesla. Uh, I will, Let's go. I'm uh, pretty sure I put your channel in the description, but if not, I will update it um, and put it there. Well, any, if anyone's watching that works at Twitter, get my review done. <laughs> yeah, that's weird, dude. That I know. I, I, I submitted for that, I think, in November, and it just came today. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know what's it's up It's been that. a couple months for me, but I'm actually more interested – you know, as a quick aside to getting access to being able to do community notes yeah. because I would be all over that stuff. Yeah, that would <laughs> Just be fun. Um, okay, so last question. This is for you specifically that we will do today. Um, are you going to get rid of your Model 3 for the Cybertruck? If so, will that affect your Uber Lyft? So I don't want to. My original thought was yes. You know, I'd, especially given, you know, my level of income and what I do to be able to afford Cybertruck, especially when trying to get the tri-motor, I figured I would need to pay down as much as I can on the three and then flip it around and trade it in. But if I can, I absolutely want to keep Mew. Uh, sentimental reasons, but also because I can put them to work as a rental. And then whenever we do get our Tesla network, then I already have a head start with having a vehicle like that. Um, even regardless of whether or not I do keep the car, I will be using a Cybertruck for Uber and Lyft. That is the whole point of the channel name cyber lift right exactly. um, it was gonna fire up when i got the truck but of course becoming a beta tester it's like yeah let's go early for sure well yeah cyber truck will be my rideshare vehicle picking people up blowing their minds the same experience you're getting now but from inside a cyber truck um and I, I really hope i don't have to get rid of Mew in the process so the goal is to keep them unless i really have no other choice cool so, all right yeah i like that it. answer i know i'm so for me like i would 
we're definitely going to trade something. Um, for now, it seems like the Model X, but I am going to commute in my Cybertruck, and I like feel like such a, I don't know, I feel like weird about it because I'll be driving to work, and my commute is 35 miles each way, right? So I'm going to drive 70 miles a day in an empty truck with just me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, you know, yeah, on great. the highway mostly. So like, don't get me sure. wrong. There's probably more pickups on the highway here than anything else. And at least this one's electric, but I just like, can't get that feeling out of my chest of like, what a waste to, to you'll have the ton of cover. They won't know it's empty. I mean, yeah. most trucks driving around. That's what I'm saying. California. They're empty. That's so what I'm no, saying. No one's it, got anything. It's, it's not like it's weird from the perspective of like my local area, but for me personally, I'm like, what a waste. Like, so I would love to be able to keep my three or maybe even just get like a standard range uh, or keep my Y or get a standard range model three and then use mm -hmm. that for more commuting and then use the Cybertruck for like literally everything else. Because um, I will be using yeah. the bed and everything, but just most days, uh, you know, I won't. So <laughs> Chris, that's that's, actually, that's a flex. <laughs> that's, that's something I wanted to bring up. Uh, there is a there, there's a working space in the gig atmosphere with uber and and such where mm -hmm. i'll be able to put the cyber truck to work as a delivery vehicle i plan to do that I, uber right. has uh i haven't seen it in a long time because i haven't had a truck to mess with it but there's basically like uber delivery <laughs> like you know furniture whatever you right know, big yeah. things and i'll be able to put it to the test and see if it can really handle being a truck like for a sure truck. for sure all right i gotta respond to a couple of these boo anti-trucks uh, sentiment no it's not anti-truck sentiment it's <laughs> it's a waste for a single person to be driving a huge vehicle 100 miles a day okay yeah, that's, that's your Arkimoto mission uh, statement right there <laughs> exactly and, I, and i'm talking about that personally i don't care about anyone else's trucks yep. but like come on it's a waste dog i get nine miles per gallon in an empty bronco no shame <laughs> bronco. that is, that is so funny right yeah that is so funny um <laughs> Um, okay. So anyway, thank you so much, uh, Kaz for, um, talking with us. I think everybody had a really fun time. Thank you everybody for asking questions. I will give you a little outro. So hold on one second. Um, and I will be doing this again with other, I have other people lined up in the future. I think I'll give you a teaser. I think Omar might be next. Um, I also okay. have a AI driver will be on, uh, but we don't have a date yet. And then I have a few other people that'll be coming in the future. So uh, make sure you look out for those and, you know, this will be available on a podcast. So um, do you have any final words you would like to say to everybody? Uh, a really huge shout out to everybody who's watched me, encouraged me, helped me, feedback, how to improve ideas. It's really appreciated. It's humbling and I love every one of you and I'm going to keep on pushing hard. I got I got goals to catch up to Chris here. So I'm going to work hard. <laughs> Good. Awesome. Cool. Thank you so much. Make sure you subscribe to both of us. Um, and I appreciate everybody watching. I hope y'all have a good night and uh, you'll see us in uh, future videos. Peace. Take care. <laughs>